Creep happens when a force is applied to a solid material within its elastic limit, the resulting deflection will increase very subtly with time if the force is held constantly, this is true whether the force is in tension or compression, this phenomenon is called creep, and by definition, is not permanent but is recoverable, the signal from a load cell exhibits this creep, and therefore it should be understood in all load cell applications, both loaded creep and creep recovery are exponential with time, as illustrated here. A force is applied in time 0 to A, and the deflection goes from point 0 to point K. Then in a stable loading condition, the deflection increases up to point M. During time A to B. This is positive creep. It is also possible that it could have been negative creep, in which case the curve from K to M would have gone negative rather than positive. When the force is released at time B, the deflection quickly goes to point J, then creep recovery occurs and the deflection goes back toward zero with about the same curve shape as the loaded creep inverted. Creep continues as long as a force is applied, but the rate of creep decreases significantly with time, it is typically measured and specified for a 20-minute interval. To illustrate the concept, the creep in the first 20 minutes is about equal to the creep in the succeeding 24 hours. The change in load cell signal occurring with time while under load and with all environmental conditions and other variables remaining constant, normally expressed in units of percent of applied load over a specified time interval, it is common for characterization to be measured with a constant load at or near capacity. Creep recovery is when a change in the load cell signal is occurring with time immediately after removal of a load which had been applied for a specified time interval, environmental conditions and other variables remaining constant during the loaded and unloaded intervals, normally expressed in units of percent of applied load over a specified time interval, normally the applied interval and the recovery interval are equal, it is common for characterization to be measured with a constant load at or near capacity. The difference between load cell signal immediately after removal of a load which had been applied for a specified time interval, environmental conditions and other variables remaining constant during the loaded interval, and the signal before application of the load, normally expressed in units of percent of applied load over a specified time interval, it is common for characterization. It is also possible to match the creep of the strain gauge to the creep of the flexure material, thus at least partially cancelling out the creep effect. Interface is able to produce load cells with a creep specification of plus or minus 0.025% of load in 20 minutes, a factor of 10 better than the uncompensated flexor material. On special order, creep performance of plus or minus 0.010% of load can be achieved. An interesting facet of creep compensation is that, in any production lot, the compensated creep of each load cell can be positive, negative, or even zero. This happens because the gauge creep can be slightly smaller than, slightly larger than, or exactly equal to the flexor creep, within the specification limits. Repeatability is affected by any one of the following factors. Tightness of the mechanical connection of fixtures. Rigidity of the load frame or force application system. Repeatability of the hydraulic forcing system itself. Application of a dead weight load too quickly, causing over application of the force due to impact. Poor control of reading times, introducing creep into the data. Unstable electronics due to temperature drift, power line susceptibility, noise, etc. Reproducibility is achieved most easily by using interface gold standard load cells. The low moment sensitivity makes them less susceptible to misalignments in load frames. That, combined with the permanently installed loading stud, high output, and low creep, makes them the cell of choice with users who cannot compromise those who need the very best. Variation in excitation voltage can also cause a small shift in zero balance and creep. This effect is most noticeable when the excitation voltage is first initiated. The obvious solution for this effect is to allow the load cell to stabilize by operating it with 10 VDC excitation for the time required for the gauge temperatures to reach equilibrium. For critical calibrations this may require up to 30 minutes. Interface conducted design verification tests to substantiate the theoretical life predictions by means of actual load tests of the product. The analysis of the test data showed that there were no indications of fatigue failure nor degradation of load cell performance outside specified limits. For the critical load cell parameters of output, zero balance, nonlinearity, hysteresis, and creep, during or after completion of the verification test program, 